Yes, this is nothing new. Degeneracy in Hollywood. So this actor and musician, Christian Keyes, you might know he was in The Boys and he's also in this Tyler Perry produced show called All the Queen's Men. And that's based on a novel that he wrote actually. Um, so he went on Instagram Live the other day for about an hour talking about all of these pressures that he's faced in Hollywood at the hands of other men in the industry. And I, that's why I thought this stood out is uh, we don't hear this type of narrative a lot. Usually when you see Me Too claims, it is the actresses and females in Hollywood making allegations against the male executives and producers, um, not the other way around and certainly not men accusing men. And what was interesting about this is he names one specific billionaire who is a powerful man in Hollywood he claims has sexually harassed him for years. And he said, sometimes it's our own heroes. Sometimes it's even the people that we deify and think have done such great things for the culture who behind the scenes are doing shady stuff like this. Um, and he went on to say that, yes, he was offered $100,000 to strip. Uh, another person in Hollywood tried to, tried to climb into bed with him when he was drunk. Um, he also said that he's decided to, quote unquote, take the scenic route with his career, essentially passing up a lot of opportunities and a lot of offers that were quid pro quos. Uh, meaning if he had to sacrifice his integrity or his morals by offering sex or, you know, undressing for these weird degenerates in the Hollywood elite circle, he wouldn't take those roles. So that's actually cost him a lot in his career, uh, according to this account. He said, I didn't sell my soul or my ass for success. He names the shady and predatory beloved public figure. He's hinting that he's going to disclose who exactly it is at some point in the near future, that he also has recordings of that misconduct dating back nearly 20 years. He showed a, a disguised camera recorder Man. that it looks like a pen. And he said, uh, I've kept one of these on me since 05. Uh, at some point soon, it's going to have to come out. He said whether it's a keychain recorder or a pen or a thumb drive, because most predators would check your phone. Once the sexual harassment started, I was like, I need to protect me. I'm saying no, and I don't want this person as powerful as they are to try to get in the way of my work. So I started recording. So he has uh, almost 20 years of evidence mounting against powerful people in Hollywood that have tried to harass him. My general advice for most people is that if you work in an industry that requires you to carry a pen voice recorder, you're, you're probably not in the safest business. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm being 110% honest, just like with all of these things, unless you're willing to name names and actually talk about it, I don't know what you want me to do with this. Right. We know that Hollywood is full of scumbags who commit all sorts of atrocious acts. But what does this get anyone other than more publicity that just reinforces either reinforces your view that Hollywood is full of scumbags or gives you something to complain about with people saying like uh, you're bringing this up without offering any evidence to what happened? What is the point of this? should have gone to the cops when it happened initially. The same things they would say to the women when the women come forward with these claims and people mm -hmm. are immediately skeptical. Am I skeptical that these things happened? Hell no. I believe that this stuff actually happened all the time, actually happens all the time, but without names being named, without actually having instances to show of what actually happened, this just looks like an article that's done to promote his next work. I don't know if that's the case, but I don't know what they want me to take from it. Well, as soon as he spoke out and hinted at this one particular person, a lot of people know him from Tyler Perry produced projects. Yeah. So a lot of people suspected that he is referring to Tyler Perry. Although the fact that he is still working with Tyler Perry to this day would suggest it has to be somebody else. Probably somebody else if he's um, still working with him. Here are some of the comments. One said, why is it when a man comes out about sexual assault, you victim blame and tear them apart? I mean, that's the culture around the women these days, too. It's not like people are immediately... Look, we are past the... It, maybe maybe this is just different for you. Do you see this the same? It's like, now whenever there is a claim of any sort now, it's like nobody gets believed. 
Mm -hmm. Another said, yes, we know he worked with many people, but the black community associate him with Tyler Perry. So everyone will think it's Tyler Perry. And if not, then he indirectly assassinated his character. Yeah. But when people put faces to accusations, uh, they're saying that he's he's being blamed. He's being victim blamed at this point because he didn't say anything beforehand. Um, they're saying this is putting clocks on people's trauma. So that would be their uh, their rebuttal to you, Brett, is that you can't put a timer on someone speaking out about something that they went through in Hollywood. No, you can't. But the sad fact of the matter is, is that it automatically, whether they like it or not, puts a timer on whether people are going to take you at your word right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, and it would have been smarter to just come right out and say who it was rather than hinting around it and beating around the bush. Uh, he said, man, the world is celebrating this person and they don't even know the shady and predatory way this person moves. Whoever he's predators... talking about is probably a bad person. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, predators resent the prey that gets away when you don't say yes and you don't acquiesce and literally and figuratively play ball. They resent you. Yeah. Um, and I think that this goes beyond just calling out degeneracy and predatory behaviors in Hollywood, it goes beyond just sexual harassment claims. Because if you're somebody that generates a lot of revenue in show business, you're going to immediately become the target of psychological control from the powers that be. And he word for word called them the powers that be in this, in this Instagram live. And it made me think about Dave Chappelle he did this interview with Oprah back in 2006 after he turned down a $50 million contract with Comedy Central in between the season two and three of the Dave Chappelle show. He seemingly vanished into thin air and it turns out that he just left the country, went to Africa to get his head straight because he felt like people were deliberately trying to psychologically attack him. He remembers that there were fake headlines coming out about him. They said he had pneumonia, which wasn't true. It was just a totally random lie. Um, he also says it felt like there was always someone over his shoulder telling him that he was crazy. He was being pressured to take antipsychotic medications, Kanye which he West didn't need. Again. It's all the Kanye story, but repeated back 20 years before, before yep. and I see why Dave Chappelle seems to have a little bit of sympathy for Kanye since he experienced something so similar and in this interview Oprah repeatedly just discredits everything he's saying she's trying to actually still point the finger at him yep. and be like oh but were you actually losing your mind uh, it seems like you were spiraling. Like, what happened there? Like, were you going to rehab? Were you on drugs? She was gaslighting him to make him think that people weren't trying to get into his mind when they absolutely were. And Dave Chappelle is an extremely successful person and an extremely intelligent person. People who are of a lesser <laughs> IQ and lesser social standing would be far easier to manipulate mentally. Mm -hmm. far easier and we see it every day in Hollywood which is why I'm saying like look I'm not by saying by, by saying what I'm saying about this guy saying that I, I can't I can't take what he's saying all that seriously because who who am I supposed to attribute this anger to right your story is supposed to fill me with a certain amount of rage over all of the injustices and degeneracy going on in Hollywood but unless there's a place for that anger to actually be focused it's just anger run amok which does nothing for anybody so who does it benefit him that's it That's right now. Point. So I don't know what you want me to do with it. I would just say this is an example of Hollywood systematically emasculating men. Yes. That's what they tried to do to Kanye West. They tried to do it to Dave Chappelle. And in that same interview with Oprah, he talked about this weird pressure that he faced to cross dress for bits. Like everyone around him just really wanted him to dress up as a woman as a joke and he says no that's played out like everyone's done it it's really not that funny and they were like no but it's like such a good joke though like you should wear a dress you should put on this dress and he repeatedly resisted the idea and 
I think that's just one glaring example of Hollywood trying to emasculate men. And what they do to women is they try to have them leverage their sexuality for resources and positions of power. What they do to men is psychologically break them. It happened to Will Smith. It happened to the Kanye. It, it happened to The Rock. It, there are plenty of John examples. Cena. And John Cena also was seen cross-dressing. This is something that you can find many cultural examples. They listed um, Martin Lawrence cross-dressed for jokes Terry as well. Cruz. Terry Crews. Um, obviously, Tyler P Perry is one of the best known for doing it. Um, it's, it's not uncommon. And when I watch that interview with Dave Chappelle from 2006, I see that he was trying to push back on all of this negativity in show business. And Oprah became what was wrong with that business. I, I noticed that Dave a, Chappelle said- A disciple said, of Weinstein. Dave Chappelle said that it was never the fame that got to him. It was the fact that what came with that fame was wealth that people wanted to latch onto and people wanted to quote get in my mind and get in my pockets and that was what drove him quote unquote crazy but it would drive anyone crazy and he's right that they were deliberately trying to push him into a mental breakdown make him go to rehab and get him on psychiatric medications that he doesn't actually need to make him more suggestible and malleable to be controlled. This is this is a known thing. In fact, in Kanye's rant that he was doing in Vegas over the weekend, he mentioned Aaron Carter. Yep. And I know that he was just throwing that out there and he didn't really get into the context for why, but it's because people like uh, Harley Pasternak, the personal trainer, there are more than just Harley Pasternak doing similar things there in Hollywood. Many, there are many Harley Pasternaks doing What they are are handlers, okay? That they, they I guess a, a colloquialism for them is MK Ultra mind control. I don't know if you would, you know, specifically uh, call that a CIA operation, but they're certainly using the same tactics. The CIA has been involved in Hollywood propaganda for years, so mm -hmm. that's not hard to believe either. We all understand that, right? And that's not, it, it, it's really funny because when you talk about these things, it is easy to, to just dismiss it because the idea of like government propaganda and messaging done to control a populace, it sounds like the work of fiction written in a book. But as we know, Hollywood is a multi-billion dollar industry that makes movies that do. There's ample evidence that they, sh they say that the cutback in smoking in America has directly uh, direct correlations to the fact that Hollywood was told to stop promoting smoking in their movies and television, which led to it becoming less popular and less commonplace here in the States. So if it's one of those things, it's not just going to be done for something like that that's good for you. It's called tell a vision for a reason. And it's a very strong form of mind control. And you have to be able to control the people that are you're using as the tools of that mind control. Mm -hmm. and that shows you, that they, they actually do see the kind of power they hold yes. in what they present to you on television and in movies. And in a lot of ways, like the more money that these actors, these paid actors amass and the more power they amass, you have to find other ways to control them because you can't simply control them through finances because first you hook them with money, but then you keep them with blackmail and various forms of control. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I, I did want to play a little bit of that Dave Chappelle clip um, to give context for what I was talking about. And you can just tell that Oprah uh, wants to make him question his own narrative and uh, is trying to convince him and the audience that he actually did uh, have some kind of mental break. And he wasn't just responding reasonably to the circumstances and the nefarious actors who are around him. Okay. Here we go. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why all these brothers got to wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. 
the movie's going good. So I walk in the trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And it, huh? What? The prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. The, that should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, uh, Brokeback Mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> like, wear, the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know, I mean, this is, uh, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. Guy comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, how, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? <laughs> you know, it's like, so, you gotta take a stand. Yep. Yeah. So I think that clip says all you need to know about that subject. <laughs> uh, I think he, he was telling the truth, and if you watch the full interview, you're gonna see that Oprah was clearly gaslighting him. Yeah, it's uh, and he's also somebody who he had the enough power at that time to at least be able to say no, right? He can say no and, and make a stamp. Also, like a lot of this stuff was happening when contract renegotiations were coming up for the Chappelle show, remember? And that was a lot of money. And it was he was considered crazy eventually at a certain point for walking away from such large contracts. So mm -hmm. seeing all this stuff, look, Hollywood is full of scumbags, as we know, start to finish. So, um. Thank you. But this actor, again, I'm, I'm not trying to tell the, like, call this actor out for anything other than the fact that I don't know what you want me to do if you're not listing the person, if you're not actually telling us who it was, we have to hold everyone to the same standard. And right now, these days, it feels like, at least in this world, most people, if, if a woman comes forward nowadays, maybe not the normies, but the people that are in this space right now are going to say, like, why wasn't this talked about when it happened why didn't you bring it up you know why aren't you naming names and we talked about yesterday megan fox says all of these bad things happened to me and, and but i'm not naming any names. i was in relationships with all and, the all of these famous men and who, i'm not going to name any i'm names. not going to name who they are but i'm just going to write all of these poems suggesting yeah. that they abused me physically and psychologically and you're just going to have to guess yeah. who they were and i'm like what do you want me to do with that like wow megan fox it must have been so difficult for you to be a world-renowned sex symbol who is incredibly attractive and famous and to be in relationships with other famous men it was it was beneficial for your career that sounds really difficult i'm so sorry for you thanks for watching listen to full episodes of pop culture crisis on spotify keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show bye guys